Welcome to Feed Dump, where this week we are terrible April Fool's jokes. I am It's My Birthday on Facebook. Haha, ha, no it isn't. Joining me this week is I'm Pregnant. JK, just ate a bunch of tacos. And Half-Life 3 is coming out. Aha, I abused my position of trust. Gotcha. A Florida man was arrested for burglary and the theft of a gun and two watches, which I don't think is notable on its own. That sounds like morning in Florida. But what was notable is that we know he's a Florida man because of the map of Florida tattoo on his left temple. I desperately need this tattoo just to have like the giant dong of Florida extending down the side of his face like an asymmetrical mutton chop. His stupid tattoo is kind of like a tree frog's bright colors. It's like, no, no, I'm dumb. Back away from me. You don't want to see what's about to happen. With his new gun and two watches, he now knows not only what time it is, but he has an alarm so he knows when it's time to do bath salts and eat someone. I find it kind of entertaining that the Palm Beach Post is reporting that it was a Michael Kors watch, a counterfeit Rolex, and a gun. You'd think Floridians would care what kind of gun it is. It could have been a Michael Kors gun. The rose gold one. Investigators say the man was recognized by his tattoos on surveillance footage, but not the Florida tattoo. The tattoo of red rum on his neck. Well, you kind of have to admire his... Do you, though, Cam? Cam? Do you? A gym in Edmonton was surprised to learn that someone had broken in during the night to work out. Look, some people are really serious about getting my games. No, I get this. Sometimes it's two in the morning and you've accidentally eaten an entire skinless roast chicken and you've got your teen window. I think this makes a lot of sense. You go to the gym and people are staring at you while you're working out and you don't like it. Clear solution. Go at two in the morning. Nobody's there. Despite the gym's computers and expensive equipment, the only items stolen were an agility ladder, a step counter, and a t-shirt with the logo of the gym. I imagine this person will be easy to identify because of their clear labeling and amazing ass, but will you be able to catch them? A pair of mud-caked construction boots were carefully left outside the main door, and a men's coverall was neatly folded inside the foyer. I mean, at least he's considerate. Some people don't even wipe down the machines. Maybe he just put the equipment away in its correct spot. I'm willing to bet that t-shirt comes back washed. My favorite part is that the gym's unofficial mascot, a large cardboard cutout of Bon Jovi, was turned around to face the wall. Well, that just makes no sense. For one thing, it was Dave Mustaine who played with his back to the crowd to conceal his finger style. I mean, this makes a lot of sense. I don't want Bon Jovi watching me work out either. And another thing, is their mascot John Bon Jovi, or is it the cardboard cutout of John Bon Jovi? Which I think is way more interesting. The intruder also appears to have wiped down with one of the gym's signature mint-scented towels before placing it in the laundry basket. What kind of gym has a cardboard cutout of Bon Jovi as their mascot, but then has mint-scented towels for their guests to wipe their butts on? I want to join this gym. But wait, there's more. Two hours after reporting this to the police, the midnight lifter returned to the gym and was found wearing a bunch of women's clothes he had scrounged from the lost and found. What if it was Bon Jovi all along and he just didn't want to be watched by himself? Well, I mean, that makes sense, right? He left behind his boots and coveralls, so presumably he needed something to wear besides the t-shirt. So, you know, you just pick up a pair of, like, Lululemon scubas from the lost and found in a sports bra. I wouldn't want to wear a sports bra that I got from the lost and found. Spoilers, but when you're running and, like, working out, in here, it gets sweaty. It's not fun. The town of Teaneck, New Jersey has a real problem with wild turkeys getting all up in everyone's business, and they are planning to deal with it by getting 20 air horns. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, wait, no, this is good, wait. Fuck. So these air horns are for when like you no scope a turkey or when a turkey no scopes you? Do you think turkeys actually respond to But what happens if the turkeys just start getting used to the air? You see, the problem is, only the state is allowed to actually touch the birds. Residents are allowed to try and keep them away humanely, using air horns or hoses. And uh, if you decorate your window, apparently they will not shit in your front yard. This is the information the residents have been given. Decorate your windows? Are they just trying to get people to, like, beautify their neighborhood? What the hell is going on here? Decorate how? Like Christmas decorations? Perhaps a skeleton from Halloween to scare them away? 
Maybe a matching curtain and valent set? I don't know how that'll help the turkeys, but it'll probably look really good. How much damage can wild turkeys possibly do? They're essentially a wad of meat that doesn't need to be refrigerated. They've apparently pecked at cars and held up traffic, and on one instance, flown through someone's glass kitchen window. So, that's why the window thing. Oh, that explains the air horns. I thought they were to frighten away the turkeys, but they're really just to like, do their entrance thing when they Kool-Aid man through your front window. I wonder if the sound of the air horn actually has any negative effect on the turkey. And with that, we bid you a good feed dump for this week. But until next time, remember, there may be better sources for news, but they don't have this helmet, with which I can be grossly incandescent. Damn it, why am I in the beach chair? <laughs>